Hello and welcome to this week's Behind the Scenes where we take a look at the process behind building this giant snail shell dwelling. As with most things, it began with a sketch and me having no idea what I was getting myself into. I ended up using dryer vent tubing as it was lightweight and easy to manipulate into the shape that I wanted for the shell. Initially I had gotten two lengths of it and ended up having to go back and get two more to finally get the size that I wanted. I used plastic bags underneath the tubing to help prop up the center spirals to help give a little bit more dimension and shape like you would see on an actual snail shell. From there, it was one of the greatest paper mache endeavors that I have ever embarked on. I did an initial layer all over the top of the tubing, and that layer probably took the longest because there were so many ridges that I had to make sure were covered. And from there, I did three more layers to help smooth everything out and also add strength to the structure so that it would hold up on its own. So I did paper mache again all over the tubing, to make a back half for it, obviously not having it raised as much in the center. And then it was time to attach them together to make one whole formed shell. I took barbecue skewers that I taped together and then a lot of hot glue on the bottom half to help prop them up. Then I just put hot glue on top and rested the top shell on top so that there was something to help hold it up. From there, I took thin cardboard from old pasta boxes and cut them to shape to help form a middle piece that would, again, help attach the two pieces together. From there, it was even more paper mache with about three layers around that centerpiece to help smooth everything out and add further strength to the attachment of the two halves. Now it was time to paint this bad boy. I painted the whole shell with a base coat of white to cover all of the newsprint, so when that next base brown color went down there would be no issues or 99 cent mangoes peeking through. After I had covered the whole shell in a coat of brown, I went in with lighter and darker brown colors to help add shadow and highlight and add a bit of character and realism to this shell. Next up was the chimney, which was made entirely out of cardboard. I basically just made a long rectangular box and then made tiny little bricks out of smaller pieces of cut cardboard that were glued into place. I then painted it and then went in with a black and a little bit of that red to go in between where the mortar would be for this brick chimney and added a little bit around the edges of the bricks to help give a little bit of age and soot and that character that we love so much. The chimney was attached using model magic clay around the base and once that had dried I glued it down further. The window was made using a 5x5 five five inch piece of glass from a photo frame and I traced and cut out where I wanted it placed on the shell. I attached the glass on the inside using duct tape and glue and added a crochet doily cut in half to give it a little bit of hominess with some curtains behind there. I used two sticks that I had cut to size to reinforce this forest hominess aspect to this window. Mm -hmm. 
To seal in the window and cover up the duct tape, I used more Model Magic clay around the edges of the window. And then I added a roof on top using more of that clay. The front door was made out of tongue depressors that I had stained to give a richer tone and glued together then cut to the shape that I wanted. I made the hinges and the door handle out of more Model Magic clay that I spray painted gold and then went in with a little bit of watered down black paint to give a little bit of age. You can see there on the front porch there are two tiny little candles that I made out of clay that are just drying and will later go in the windowsill to provide a little bit of warmth and glow to our home. So I went in with more Model Magic clay and went around the edges of the door and the front porch just to attach everything and make it all feel like one cohesive piece. After it had all dried, I went in with brown paint and painted it all up so there were no glaring white patches and everything felt like it belonged. The front porch was made less of a hazard with a few little fence posts made out of barbecue skewers that were painted. The rope around the front is twine that I decided to braid to give a little bit more bulk to it. It was a little bit flimsy looking with just a single strand, and they were just hot glued into place. For me, it was the final touches that I think really brought the whole piece together which was adding little bits of moss in and around the door, along the top of the shell, around the chimney, on top of the windowsill, just little things that made it feel like it was really lived in. I attached a few little turkey tail mushrooms around the door as well, and I added a little flower basket out in the front that had moss and a few flowers just kind of spilling over the top. So now the shell was complete and it was ready for a photo shoot. So my sweet husband and my adorable pup and I loaded into the car and drove to the park where we may have scared a couple passerbys with a giant shell on my back but to me it was just a Friday afternoon. Thank you so much for watching this video and hey you made it to the end congratulations i really appreciate you spending a bit of your day tagging along with me as we make something weird together and i will catch you next week bye